Hi everyone, today we'll be going over accounts, May June 2022, paper 2 to question number 3. This is structured paper 2, which consists of 4 questions, 2 of 30 marks and 2 of 15 marks, and we are also given a time limit of 1 hour 30 minutes. And since question number 3 is of 15 marks, we will be attempting to solve this question under 15 minutes. Without any further delay, let's get started. N Limited is a trading company, and the statement of financial position at 31st December 2021 is as follows. All right, then we are given additional information. Purchases for the year were 600,000, of which 80% were on credit. Okay, let's figure out our credit purchases. That is just going to be the 80% of total purchases, which is 600,000, which means that we can multiply just these two amounts together. So that's 600,000 times 80%, which we can write down as 0.80. So this gives our credit purchases to be 600,000 times 0 0.80, which results in the amount of 480,000. All right, then credit sales were 30% of all sales. Again, in order to figure out the credit sales, we can just multiply this 30% with our total sales value. Let's figure out our credit sales as well. Let's look for the total sales value above. We can see that we are actually given the statement of financial position, which does not record the revenue. Which must mean that there might be other information regarding the total sales. Okay, for the third information, we are given that the company had a gross profit margin of 40%. So a gross profit margin just means that 40% of the revenue turned out to be the gross profit. So we can write it down as 40% times the total revenue is the gross profit. All right, then we are also given that the company's gross profit for the year under 31st December 2021 was 420,000. Let's substitute this into our equation. So 40%, we can write it down as 0 0.40 times the revenue equals to gross profit is of 420,000. So this gives our total revenue to be 420,000 divided by 0 0.40, which gives the total value of the revenue to be 1,050,000. So that's 1050. Now we can easily figure out the credit sales because we now have the value for the total sales, which is 1,050,000. And the credit sales were 30% of all sales, so that's just going to be 1,050,000 times 30%, which is 0 0.30. This gives the total value of the credit sales to be 315,000. Okay, then the company's profit for the year was 182,000 and no interest were charged on the bank overdraft. Okay, now we can have a look at our question. We need to calculate the following ratios for the year ended 31st December 2021, stating the formula used. Okay, for the first one, we need to calculate our trade payables turnover. And we know that the formula for the trade payables turnover is trade payables whose value we can find in our above statement of financial position divided by the credit purchases whose value we already figured out above. And since we are figuring it out in days, we need to multiply it with the number of days in a year, which is 365. Now for the calculation part, let's substitute our value of trade payables from the above statement of financial position. Trade payables is in the current liability section right here, which amounted to 42,000. Let's substitute this value. So that's 42,000. And now we need to divide it with our credit purchases, which we figured out above. The credit purchases was 480,000. Let's substitute this value as well. And we need to multiply it with 365. Okay, so that's 42,000 divided by 480,000 times 365, which gives the value of 31.94. And since we're talking about days, we actually need to round off our number. And whenever we're figuring out the ratios in days, we just have to round it up. So if it's 31, we need to round it up to 32. So that's 32 days. This is the trade payables turnover. Now for the second part, we need to figure out the trade receivables turnover in days. And the formula for trade receivables turnover is just the trade receivables 
whose value can be found in the above statement of financial position divided by the credit sales whose value we figured out above and since this is in days we just need to multiply it with 365 okay for the calculation let's substitute the value of trade receivables from the information above trade receivables is a current asset and its value is given to be 30 let's substitute this value so that's 30,000. Now we need to divide it with our credit sales, which we figured out above. The credit sales amounted to 315,000 right here. Let's substitute this value as well. And we need to multiply it with 365. So that's 30,000 divided by 315,000 times 365, which results in the value of 34.76. Again, since we're talking about days, we just need to round it up. So that's 34, and we need to round it up by one digit, so that's 35 days. This is our trade receivables turnover. Now we need to figure out the return on capital employed. So return on capital employed is just going to be profit before interest divided by the capital employed. And we figure it out in percentage, meaning that we just need to multiply it with 100. And capital employed here is just the sum of our total equity plus our debentures. Okay, so we are given information regarding profit for the year above. We know that the profit for the year was 182,000. And we know that no interest was charged on the bank overdraft. Okay, there was no interest on bank overdraft, but let's have a look above. We can see that we are given non-current liabilities, 8%, which means that interest will be charged on this debenture. Let's figure out the interest on debenture. So that's the total debenture value times 8%, and the debenture is 250,000. So that's 250,000 times the debenture rate of 8%, which you can write down as 0.08. And this gives our interest on debentures to be 250,000 times 0 0.08, which results in 20,000. Now we can easily figure out our profit before interest. And that is just the profit for the year. Plus the interest. We are adding this interest back to the profit for the year because we know that while figuring out the profit for the year, we definitely subtracted our interest as an expense, right? So if we're figuring out the profit before interest, we just have to reverse it. So now we're adding the interest back. Okay, we have our profit for the year to be 182,000. Let's substitute that value. And we just figured out our interest above. And the interest on the venture was 20,000. So we need to add it back to the profit for the year. So this gives the profit before interest to be 182,000 plus 20,000, which results in the value of 202,000. Let's substitute this value to our formula for return on capital employed. That's 202,000. Now we need to figure out the value for capital employed, and we already said that the formula for capital employed is the sum of equity and debentures. So let's have a look above. We can see that our total equity is 1,282,000, so capital employed is the equity whose value is 1,282,000 plus the debentures whose value is 250,000. This gives our total capital employed to be 1,282,000 plus 250,000 which results in the value of 1,532,000. Let's substitute this value into our formula. So that's 1,532,000 times 100. So the return on capital employed is just going to be 202,000 divided by 1,532,000 times 100. And since we require two decimal places, that gives our answer to be 13.19.
And since we multiply it with 100, we need to write our result in a percentage. So that's percent. Let's move to another question. For the fourth one, we need to calculate the non-current asset turnover. And the formula for non-current asset is just the net revenue divided by our net book value of non-current assets. So that's net book value of non-current assets. And we do not actually multiply it with 100 because the non-current asset turnover is always given in times. Whenever there's a word turnover, the answer will always be in times. Okay, so let's substitute the values for our calculation. Net revenue, we figured it out from the given information. Net revenue was 1,050,000. Let's write it down. That's 1,050,000. And we need to divide it with the net book value of non-current assets. And since we're given the statement of financial position, we know that the non-current assets are always recorded at a net book value. And it amounted to 1,520,000. Let's substitute this value. So that's 1,520,000. Okay, so this gives our non-current asset turnover to be 1,050,000 divided by 1,520,000. Since we require our answer to two decimal places, this gives our answer to be 0 0.69 times. All right, this concludes the first part of this question. Now we can move towards the second one. We need to explain the importance of this non-current asset turnover to the directors of N Limited. Okay, so we already stated the formula for the non-current asset turnover right here. And this just gives the proportion of the net revenue as compared with the non-current assets, right? And we can interpret it as the ability or the efficiency of the non-current assets to generate revenue. So we can see that the ratio of non-current asset turnover shows how efficiently assets are being used by the company in order to generate revenue. Let's write it down. The ratio will inform the directors how efficiently assets are being used by the company to generate revenue. Okay, then we can see that our non-current asset turnover is 0 0.69 times. And this means that the company was able to generate 0 0.69 times the value of the non-current assets as its revenue. And this might seem pretty low. So this is a concern for the future growth of the business. Let's write it down as well. The low ratio is a cause for concern. for the future growth of the business. This concludes the second part of this question. Now we can move towards the third one. We need to explain one reason why shareholders will be interested in the financial statements of the company. So shareholders are the investor that invests in this company with the purpose of gaining some returns in the future, which means that they will definitely be interested to assess the profitability of the company to gauge future dividends. Let's write it down. To assess the profitability of the company. to gauge future dividends. Okay, so this concludes the third part of this question as well as this entire question. If you found this video useful, make sure you like the video and leave a comment below. And make sure you're subscribed to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you do not miss any of these videos in the future. Thank you.